visits. One of the, uh, I, I often get requests from uh, new farmers to say, you know, who can I apprentice with? Uh, I've just bought a farm, and, and can you suggest somebody I can go and apprentice with? And the first thing I usually say is, why do you need to apprentice? And if they can say that, if they can give me a good enough reason, I'll, I'll give them a list of names. But for the most part, I really want, you know, to, to go out there and put their own sweat equity in their own farm. And at the same time as they're doing that, in the first couple of years of your farming experience, you may not be turning it a huge profit. Uh, you're going to be making lots of mistakes, and that's all part of the process. But it is important that when you are still doing that, that you continue to do visits. And as, uh, as uh, Klaus and, and, and Mary talked about yesterday, most organic farmers are quite willing to share uh, their knowledge. And, um, and, and it's not there shouldn't be that fear that you're going to be going in there and competing um, because the more there is in the market, it's usually creating more of a demand for the product. Um, and then attending things like conferences, workshops, um, and they're, they're throughout uh, North America, so uh, you can keep learning that way. Um, the growing part, of course, uh, I think it's so important to just do it. Um, you know, you can read a lot. And uh, you can go and visit a lot of farms, and then you can apprentice. Uh, but it's so important to just go out and do it. And another aspect of that is, is experimenting. Uh, you want to keep uh, most organic uh, farming advances have come from, from uh, not from the academic community, not from universities or, or publicly funded research. It's come from farmers doing experimentation and, and really pushing um, their own ideas and that goes back to making the observations and then making some changes and then I think for this whole system to be sustainable it's got to be fun and so put an emphasis on that as well so test time you are now an organic farmer okay so mixed in with your spinach uh, you see a flourishing crop and I don't know if I spell flourishing right there of lamb exporters. how do you deal with this organically just we it Okay, yeah, that's, that's a good answer. <laughs> Just do it, huh? Weed it. Okay, yeah, you get that. Plow it down. Call it a, call it a green manure. Yeah. Okay. I mean, the only thing you could spray on that would be, uh, you know, a hort vinegar or a citric acid, but that would also burn your, your spinach crop, so you don't really have a herbicide. And these, these, are, these are the right answers. Um, you definitely, uh, the, the, the most, most likely what you would do is you'd have to weed it. Okay. Time's up. Time's up. <laughs> so the main, the main thing in, in every province, you, you have an uh, opportunity with uh, extension specialists. Um, in New Brunswick, uh, Coach Rosal uh, May can be uh, um, cornered. Uh, Susan McKinnon here in, in Prince Edward Island and myself uh, in Nova Scotia. And uh, Acorn Organics website has, uh, has an amazing list of allowable inputs, as well as uh, helping you identify weeds and diseases, uh, weeds and uh, insects, and hopefully diseases soon.